In the last video, we learned a little bit about the logistic regression classifier at sklearn. And um, today we're going to be throwing something else into the mix, which is a transformer, a logistic regression. Oh, excuse me. Uh, logistic regression and linear regressions were examples of estimators. And, um, and they give us these three methods, fit, score, and predict, that correspond to these three typical uh, steps we do in the machine learning process, training a model, testing a model, and then actually deploying it to make new predictions. And um, transformers, when we add these to the mix, are also going to be uh, taking place in these three parts. Um, they similarly have a fit function or method. And um, what we'll do in the first step is we'll, uh, when we have a transformer, is we'll uh, fit our transformer to our data and apply some sort of transformation on it. Some examples of transformations we might do is um, you know, a principal component analysis uh, to reduce the number of columns. Or we might add columns by, um, by doing a polynomial features transformer on the data. And, um, and then after that, you can actually see that a fit transform is just a combination of fit and then it's called a transform. And so we're actually doing a transform every step along um, the way. So for example, if I have in my original data some field called X and I'm doing polynomial features on it, then you know when I'm training, I want to have an X squared when I'm testing, I want to have an x squared. And, um, and when I'm actually deploying my model, I need an x squared there too, right? So um, we'll be doing transformations all the way. And the fitting just happens on the first step, um, kind of based on the original data we have. And so what we'll often want to do is we'll want to apply some sort of transformation first and then actually um, do our estimation based on the transformed data. And, and so what I'm going to be working towards is how we can build a pipeline using sklearn pipelines um, and, um, and this is going to make it really smooth to kind of pair up all these things at the appropriate times and, um, and in, in general right you can have more than one transformer we could have a pipeline of multiple transformers ending with an estimator or in the simplest case you would just have one estimator and so I'm going to show you some data that I'm randomly generating um, that demonstrates the need for this so in this data I have uh, 1000 x and y values and um, most of those uh, values at those points are going to be a light gray color. I make a scatter plot. Um, but I'm computing the distance to the coordinates 4, 1. Right? So I get the distance there. And when the distance to that is less than 4, uh, plus or minus some noise, then I make those points black. Right? So I'm going to get some data that looks like this. I'm kind of this uh, black oval shape. Um, but you can see that there's some noise around it, right? So it would be nice if we could have some sort of predictor um, that would figure out what the color of a new scatter point should be that I haven't shown yet. And so we're going to use logistic regression, right? The only classifier that we've learned yet. But logistic regression is a linear model, and it's not good at kind of capturing something like a circle in the middle of a plot. So I'm going to try it at first and show you how bad it is. And then uh, we're actually going to add polynomial features to the mix. And when I have a pipeline that has polynomial features and then logistic regression, we can actually do quite well um, at uh, kind of capturing a more complicated pattern um, like this. So down here, I've uh, imported a few things. I've imported my um, training and test uh, split function, right? That's often used for determining how well a model will do, and that's why it's under model selection. I have my polynomial features transformer and then logistic regression. And then in the end, we're gonna pull it all together with a pipeline. Okay, so first off, let's just try a straight up logistic regression and um, see how it goes. And to see how it goes, I have to first separate my data in this training and test, right? So I'm gonna say train test equals this. And uh, I'm just gonna split my original data frame. Um, and let's just take a peek at that data. Um, and, and that did not work for some reason because uh, I need to just reopen this. Okay, so that's great. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a logistic regression. And so this is just an estimator by itself, like so. And, um, and remember, the first step of machine learning is to train it. So training is done with fitting. And I want to fit to the training data. And, and I'm interested in seeing... Uh, based on the X and Y columns, what am I going to end up with in the color column? 
All right, so that was the uh, one. That's step one. That's training. And um, and then in step two, right? So I'm gonna actually in step two, I'm gonna do a score. And um, this is a test evaluate. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I want to do it for I want to do it for my training data, right? My, or my test data. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do that. And um, and it might actually seem like I'm doing pretty well, um, except if I if I do this, if I look at my test data in that color column. If I look at my value counts. Actually, let me just do this on the original. Color counts there divided by the length of DF color. Uh, well, guess what? I mean, 86% of the data is light gray, right? So it doesn't take any um, kind of genius predictor to get up to 88%, right? If I always predict light gray, um, that's not bad, right? And so what I'm going to do is this other part when I'm testing an evaluation. Sometimes I'll actually try to do some plotting to try to figure out uh, what's going on, right? So I might do, I might do this. I might say um, lr dot predict, and um, and when I'm doing the predictions, I just need this piece, right? I do that predictions. I get a bunch of colors, and um, and I'm going to actually add this as a column. To my training data, or I'm sorry, to my test data. I say this is my predicted color, and um, and you know what? It's kind of complaining because because when I do this, when I come back here, right? When I do this split, uh, these are slices of the original, and um, and I can't add columns to slices. So so you know what? Maybe I'm going to do is I'm just going down here and I say test equals test on copy. And, uh, and that will mean that test is no longer a slice. And I can add other stuff as I please, right? So if I look at this like so, um, I could plot it just like I did before. Right, so I'm going to grab this. And, and let's plot that. And I say test data, test color. So, so here's what I would hope it would look like. But what it actually looks like, so this color column that I'm supposed to get, it looks like it looks like this, right? It's actually not predicting any of those are are black, so it's doing horribly, right? And and so if I go back to this um, kind of process, machine learning process up here, I train a model, then I test a model, and sometimes it stops right there. If my model is garbage, I'm not going to start using it to make new predictions. I'm going to try something else. And the other thing I'm going to be trying is, well, let's actually do the polynomial features first. So I'm going to head down here and figure out how to get some polynomial features on this thing. And so I'm going to say PF equals polynomial. I can spell features. That's good. And um, and, uh, and and remember, I don't really need that ones column. I'm going to say include, include bias equals false. I don't need it because logistic regression can automatically add it. And, and so for this PF, I can do a fit transform on what? On my, let's, let's start on my training data. And, um, and, and I think that I only really want to do on those two columns, right? X and Y. And I get a bunch more fields here. Well, what are those? I'd actually have to create a data frame to tell. So I'm going to create a data frame here. Then the columns. For that data frame. Well, first off, let's just do that, right? It's a little easier to view. Uh, but if I want to actually have real column names there instead of this, well, I need to get that from my PF, right? I need to say get that feature names. And, um, and, and these new features are based on X and Y as original. So I'm just going to run that. And I can see, okay, well, I have these additional things. I have not only X and Y, but I have um, x squared, y squared, and, and xy, and all those are going to be important to kind of figuring out how to do this. Um, now, if I wanted to, right, I have this PF, and I'm doing the fit transform on the original data. Maybe let me just try to shorten that up a little bit. If I wanted to, then I could do uh, just a transform on the on the test data, right? If I'm if I'm doing it on, right, let me just do this. 
right? I mean, I can't just transform the training data. If I have a model based on that transformed data, then I have to transform the test data too before I can use that. I can do that. And, um, and that's not working because I need a list of columns. Okay, great. So I could do that if I wanted to. It starts to get to be a pain, right? And then if I want to do a prediction later, then I would have to transform my new data too. And so this is why we want to have a pipeline, right? Because whether I'm dealing with test data or training data, I kind of want to do that all automatically. So um, let's create a pipeline. And um, I'm going to creatively call it pipe. And so that's going to be a pipeline. And, um, and a pipeline is just a list of of either transformers and then an, an estimator at the end. Estimator. And, um, and so in here, I guess I just have one transformer. And the way this works is that um, for each of these uh, steps in the pipeline, I may have a tuple. And, um, and then the, the tuple will be like a name and then, and then the step, right? And I'm trying to actually do this twice. Okay, and I can, I can name these things whatever I want. And so for the first net step, I'm going to call that poly, because I'm doing a polynomial uh, features transformation. And in the second step, after I do that, I want to do a logistic regression. And so for here, I actually have to have those models. And so I'm going to grab my polynomial features here, like so. And, um, and then down here, I can actually grab my uh, logistic regression. Maybe I'll just retype is easier than uh, jumping up again. And, um, and once I have the pipeline, I can use it just like I would a regular logistic regression. Maybe, maybe I'm just going to scroll up and try to emphasize that. So before, what did I do? I, I fitted my LR to this data. And so let's do that. Let's, um, let's just fit this. And now instead of fitting uh, the LR, I'm going to fit the pipe. Right? I'm going to fit the pipe right like this. And the um, and, uh, pipeline is not capitalized. Excuse me. And I fitted it. Okay, well, what about the other step? Before, when I had my logistic regression, the second step is I evaluated it. And before I got 88% accuracy, um, let's see how I can do now if instead of just having a simple logistic regression, I use my whole pipeline. Can I beat 88%? I sure hope so, or this is not a good demo. And I can. Instead of 88%, um, I'm getting up to 95%. Um, now, and so I might have enough confidence. I might actually start doing predictions here, right? I could actually deploy this model. Um, but I think what will be fun is if I actually go back and, and kind of do this thing as well, right? Where I do predictions using my pipeline, right? So I'm using LR to predict. I use my full pipeline uh, to predict, and, and you can see immediately, right? It's making more uh, black predictions. Sometimes it's wrong, right? Uh, but it's actually sometimes. Uh, venturing that guess and so then if i do the scatter plot again before i could see it never was uh, a guessing that we would be having a black scatter plot uh, but now it's actually doing a pretty good job of, of kind of capturing uh, what is in that area